Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ruby Life Post Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Season 4. Footage is from the PTR, subject to change, but I assume it's gonna be pretty close to what it's going to go to the live servers. Beware of the Juggernauts because they're going to cast Excavating Blast Big Circle on the ground which is going to one shot you and it could be hard to see if you pull them in the first room in the water. Save a stun knockup or any other CC for the Tectonic Slam of the Earth Shapers as if it goes off it does a lot of AoE damage and it's not interruptible. And all the interrupts should go to the two weavers which are going to cast Ice Shield just an absorb that is going to slow you down killing them and they're also going to be casting ice bolts that you can send any spare interrupts at. Few packs of those and you're gonna end up fighting a mini boss which is going to put swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge and he's gonna follow them up with a charge that you also need to dodge. Keep in mind that he does a lot of damage to the tank on the fortified weeks especially so be prepared to heal the tank while on the move dodging the swirlies. The first boss is Meldrusa, she's going to summon ice bombs at the feet of everybody in your party. Try to stack those and keep them close together as you have to dodge them later. As her next ability is called Chill Storm, she marks a player in your party. They have 3 seconds to drop a circle that then starts to suck everybody in. Run out of it as quickly as possible and keep in mind that you'll be taking ticking damage while the circle is active with a big chunk of AoE after it ends and explodes. At 75 and 45% she summons a bunch of orbs that you have to AoE down. They also put a stacking debuff on your tank, make sure to dispel it before it reaches 8 stacks or the tank gets frozen. And the boss also puts a huge shield on herself, you have to DPS it down to interrupt her as she's doing heavy AoE damage to everybody in your team. The rest of the time she's gonna keep juggling between the hell bombs and the chill storm. After you kill the boss you fly up and you start going in a circle, there's too many bosses on each side, if you go left you're going to fight Thunderhead. He's gonna put two debuffs on players that do a lot of damage on expiration or dispelling so try to dispel one, heal up everybody and then let the second one expire to heal up once more and the boss also has a storm breath which is a frontal that you need to dodge. You usually skip the other mini boss flame Gullet but if you pull it, it also has a frontal and once it goes below 50% it starts doing increased stacking AoE damage so you have to burst it down as quickly as possible before it kills you. Going around the circle you have to kill 4 big fire elemental destroyers in order to summon the boss. They'll keep casting inferno which does AoE damage and leaves a dot on everybody in your team. That's plenty of healing to do and they're also going to mark a person with a living bomb, big circle around you. It does a bunch of damage and it knocks everybody inside up after it expires including hostile mobs. So if you get it you actually want to drop it on top of the enemies to knock them up as there's plenty of interrupting to do, preferably with or without hitting your melee and that entirely depends on your group. Now you want to be knocking mobs up because of the flame dancers who are going to cast flame dance. Seeable but uninterruptible channel that ends up with a huge AoE, if you combine that with the infernos it could easily become overwhelming and once you kill those mobs they become immune for 8 seconds and they start spawning fire swirlies around you. They also do AoE damage in close proximity so you either have to burst to their blaze of glory shield or you can just purge it which is highly recommended and at the same time you should interrupt as many cinder bolts as you can from the cinder weavers. Which by the way you can also knock up with the living bomb. The next boss is Kokia Blazehoof, she's always going to start with spawning one of the destroyers that we saw earlier in a big fiery circle that you need to dodge. Once the elemental is summoned you have to jump on it and kill it as quickly as possible as it's going to cast the well familiar inferno doing AoE damage. And at the same time you should be interrupting its roaring blaze because if it goes off it does even more AoE damage. At the same time the boss is smacking your tank with searing blows which do a lot of damage so be prepared to heal them and once you kill the elemental it explodes into a big fire bomb and it leaves a patch on the ground that you cannot go back to. Shortly after she's going to summon another elemental and the elemental always spawns on one of the players so you can bait its position. And the other thing that you should be baiting are the boulders that she throws at people, rolling stones that keep going until they hit something and they leave a permanent fire trail behind them so make sure not only to dodge them but also to bait them to the direction that you came from so you have plenty of space to juggle with the elementals and the boss. 
She always starts with summoning an elemental and then throws two boulders before she summons the next elemental, so be aware of your positioning and keep in mind that you're constantly baiting something. And if your baits are not good, you can end up locking yourself in the middle of a fire field. The trash that follows has a bunch of storm warriors that do thunderclap, small AoE area in melee, so stay out of that if you can, and small shielded elementals that are going to charge an area with a small blue swirly and explode on impact. The lightning storm that you see right now is casted by the Tempest channelers and it's not interruptible, so be prepared to use defensives and heal through that, and there also be casting thunderbolts. Interrupt as many of these as you can. The next packs also have flame channelers which have a must interrupt flash fire ability, not only does a huge dicking damage to the player, but it also heals the caster, so you definitely don't want it to go off. Before the last boss you also have to kill a mini boss that's going to cast shock blast, interrupt all of these as they do not only damage but also leave a dot at the player and you're also going to see the well familiar lightning storm which is an AoE that you have to heal through. The mini boss is also going to keep summoning the small shielded elementals and if you don't burst or purge their shields at some point he absorbs them for himself and if you fail to drip yes to his shield he does a lot of AoE damage at the end. The last boss starts in phase 1 where you fight Kuraka the big dragon and Erkhart separately. Throughout the whole fight Erkhart is going to cast Cloudburst which does AoE damage and silences you if you're casting so make sure you keep an eye on that and he's also going to storm slam your tank which does a bunch of damage and leaves a debuff on your tank increasing the damage they take for 30 seconds so make sure you keep dispelling that. He'll also keep summoning winds that try to blow everybody off the platform, changing direction every time. So be aware of that and keep an eye on the dragon because he's gonna jump down and do a frontal fire breath that you need to dodge. Shortly after he puts Inferno Core debuff on a player which does a lot of ticking damage and on expiration drops fire patches on the ground. Keep in mind that these fire patches are affected by the winds that Erkhart summons, so you have to keep dodging them while the winds are active and you can also blow them off a platform. Phase 2 starts as soon as one of them reaches 50%, then Erkhart mounts the dragon and now his new flame speed ability is going to put the Inferno Core debuff on 3 people instead of just one. So use all of your defensives and healing cooldowns here trying to burst the dragon down as quickly as possible as the flame spits will keep happening in between each of the frontals of the dragon and don't forget that Erkhart is still there and he will be casting the cloud burst which will do additional AoE damage and silence you if you're not careful. After you kill the dragon Erkhart is pretty easy on his own and also keep an eye on my channel as I'll be making a separate video for this boss not only explaining the mechanics in a little bit more depth, but also I'll provide some weak ores that will help you track the cloud burst so you don't get silenced and the positions where you want to drop the inferno core puddles so the follow up winds actually blow them off the platform and not drag them in the middle of it. So keep an eye out for that as well as the other mythic plus dungeon guides for season 4. I'll see you guys in the next video, now get out of here.